very good evening. You're watching the India Development Debate. I'm Tamanna Inamdar. Now, it's an old and unfortunately familiar plot. A new government comes in, looks to change what the previous government did, implement new policies. Fair enough so far. But then, when these changes mean an overhaul and possible impact on long tenure, high cost, vital infrastructure projects, then it becomes a problem. And that's the fear in Maharashtra right now. Less than a week after Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre has taken over, the metro shed in Are has been stopped and a slew of infra projects pushed by the previous Fadnavis government are being reviewed. Um, the Mumbai Mirror has reported today that uh, payments to all these projects have also been stopped except for the ones that have been complete 100%. Late this evening, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre clarified that he has no intention of stalling infra projects, but is merely reviewing them. Listen. In. Bullet train का अभी तक कुछ हमने decision लिया नहीं है और जो जैसे मैंने कहा कि किसी भी जो काम चल रहे हैं उनको मैंने stay order दिया नहीं सिर्फ आरे कार सेड को ही दिया था दो दिन पहले दिया है अन्यथा किसी और को मैंने दिया नहीं. Well, but it's not just a story in Maharashtra. In Andhra Pradesh, Chief Minister Jagan Reddy stalled the Amravati project, cancelled power purchase agreements and an electric vehicle contract. Now, while a new government will bring in new thinking, is it fair to investors who have to hope and pray after every election whether their projects will survive the new political tide? Who would want to invest in Indian infrastructure under these conditions? Speaking to me today on this is uh, Zafar Islam, National Spokesperson of the BJP, Dr. Samir Dalwai, Spokesperson of the NCP, R. Shriram, Resident Editor of the Economic Times, and Shishir Joshi, Journalist and Founder of Project Mumbai. Welcome to all of you and thank you for joining, with, uh, joining us on the show today. Shishir, I want to start with you because, you know, we've spoken before on how this could happen. And it seems like it could. Now, while the Chief Minister says he's merely reviewing projects, if you were an investor today, you would be nervous. Uh, Tamana, yes, we've spoken today and just as you began to say that this is the same old story, there's nothing surprising in what's happening and this is not new to, to just what the Shiv Sena is doing. Every time any other political party has taken over, the previous government's projects do get into review. But here, this time, we need to read between the lines. It's not that the projects, yes, there are investors who'd get worried or who'd get nervous. But please do remember that all these projects that we're talking about, most of them are very uh, people-friendly projects and very unlikely that the Shiv Sena is going to stop them. So, yes, there is the possibility of the bullet train that might get uh, completely stalled. But again, as you can see what Uddhav Thakri has said, that he's not really stopped them. He's reviewing them. Uh, there is the international airport, the Trans Harbour Link, the metro projects. There's only one portion of the metro project that really looks at, at a questionable space right now, and which is the car shed. So, metro really impacts the people in a positive manner. And definitely, Uddhav Thakri is not going to do something which is going to impact negatively on the on the people so what, what he's, he's trying to do, to do from whatever our reading is yeah. first was the politics of politics which you've seen over the last 25 days and yeah. what he's going to do is he will he will play the emotional game right now emotional economic strangulation yeah. with the modi government in delhi to say because the bullet train is mr modi's pet project no, no, but it's he not just may the bullet clear train. it at a later yeah. stage but right now he what he's looking for yeah. is a lot of stuff for mumbai and maharashtra Okay, but so definitely so, not the bullet train, also, but all the other projects, nothing that he's really said stopping. That's true. But yes, the Amanda. fact is, look at the fiscal state of Maharashtra. Shriram, let me come to you. It's a nearly 5 lakh crore rupee debt that Maharashtra carries. Um, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, Minister Jayant Patil uh, has uh, said that uh, maybe 2 lakh crore rupees are required for these projects and Maharashtra State's contribution to them. And they have also promised an overall farm loan waiver. It's one of the key prospects in their common minimum program. So you're going to have to get some money to do that. Uh, there will be a little tweaking here and there. My point is whether it's political posturing, whether they're really going to do it, whether they're saying they're going to do it. Why would I, as an investor today, want to invest in any state in India if this can happen to me? Well, that's a good point. And I think a lot of investors are very wary and will be very worried. And we saw that in the way the markets reacted. 
the way the markets reacted today, the way the shares of the infrastructure companies reacted today. I think the big issue here is the political issue. Uh, this is clearly a politically motivated decision. We all know that. And this decision has been taken it only to uh, seem to create a perception or an image that yes, we are trying to do certain things that are very different from what the previous government did. But the problem really here is that what are the costs at which you are trying to do these things? You uh, the Chief Minister said that he stopped the work on the metro car shed in RA. Now this work on the constructing the metro car shed has been allowed by the Supreme Court and he has come and stopped it. And obviously there are, there are issues about so people have criticized the location and said that it should be at another location. But it's also been pointed out that the other locations are really not really not feasible. There is a particular stretch of land in Bandup where, uh, which is under litigation, which is probably feasible, but then you've got to pay a lot of money to get it. So if you don't, if you don't build the car shed immediately, how will the metro projects run and how will they actually be, uh, be inaugurated and be operational? Yeah. The, uh, the, I think two of the metro projects are probably going to uh, be commissioned in the about next one, one and a half years. The other metro project, which is the underground project, is going to happen in by 2022 or 2023. So you need to have the car shed up and running. The final point about bullet train that I want to make, yes, the chief minister said that he will review it, but it's not, it's not very easy to scrap it. How are you going to scrap a central government-sponsored project with foreign funding yeah. and which is a multi-state no, project? He's not saying he's going to scrap it. The central he's government is contributing 10,000 crore. So if you, if the you Maharashtra see, government's you see contribution what all is only 5,000 crores. have been crore. saying so far. They've been saying that we want, Maharashtra government will not give the money. You fund it entirely. You are so keen on the bullet project, you fund it entirely. The, the point is, who's going to pay the money? I think, I think in that case, I think the, in, in that case, in that case, yeah, in that case, I think the central government will very gladly step in and fund the remaining 5,000 crore and it will become a completely central government come Japan, come Gujarat project. The Maharashtra government will not pay any no, money no, for it. Uh, but please remember, this is, as I think you said it in your opening statement, this is uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's pet project and he's not going to take kindly to the fact that the state government is uh, actually stalling his project. And if you read Mr. Uddhav Thakre's public statements, he's been calling Mr. Narendra Modi his big brother and he's been very careful not to criticize him. And he also wants the central government help in uh, funding the farm loan waiver. So how is it really going to work? I mean, are you going to really going to piss off the central government and mm. when you really need a lot of things from them yeah. on this issue on just 5,000 crore, when all you need to do is to give land? I'm not very sure how this is going to really play out. I don't think, okay. I, I, I think the bark here is probably worse than the bite. Okay, let me come to uh, Dr. Uh, Darwai from the NCP and you know this, this actually made our jobs easier because it's three parties. So mm -hmm. we, you know you will have to now speak for uh, the government mm -hmm. as a whole. What's the plan here? Is it just playing hardball so that you can negotiate with the centre? And does it make sense for any investor? It's, it's really not fair. It's really not fair if an investor right now, and we'll tell you in a bit, all the projects, there are major construction companies, infrastructure companies which are working on these. If they suddenly don't know if it's going to change because of the whims and fancies of a government, why will anyone want to put in money? So, Tamana, that's a good question. Let me say that as a doctor, as a practicing doctor, and you know that every time there is a change in the medical team, the doctors who come on need to know what is happening with the patient. And you need to review what's happening with the old team and with what's happening, you need to go through the papers and find out. So if the new team has come over, I think it's perfect that they are trying to find no, out what's this happening. This doctor was in the old team as well. No, but we know everything was pushed by Mr. Fadnavis and No, no, because the doctor was in the old so, team yes, as well. You know I'm sorry, your first argument has fallen flat. Is because, it? Because, okay. because, because Chief Minister Udhav Thakre was very much part of that government he was and not, all of these all, plans. So the point is that you know what was going on in the last five years. It was a government run by one person and his own party people are reveling against it. But let's not get into the politics yet. What we are saying is, as the new government has taken over, we need to find out what was happening with these issues. And as uh, Honorable Chief Minister has said, as Mr. Jayantra Patil has said, nothing has been stopped except the car shed. Things are being reviewed. And I think it's in good earnest that they have started off trying to review what is the situation. It doesn't mean that they are going to stop it. It only means they are going to do it in a better way. All these projects are helpful for the people of Maharashtra and the country. They will be done. But if there are some issues, they need to be, cons they need to be looked at. The other point, what are the issues that are likely to be looked at? Now, when you talked about making payments and investor confidence, we should know how much money is available right now. Mm. So the entire overlook, see, uh, overlook that they had yesterday was to look at the state of the treasury finances. And it's a very sad picture. You have 471 lakh crore debt on the state of Maharashtra 
and you will require 2 lakh crores to complete this, where is this money going to come from? And if somebody serious enough is going to sit down and look at it, I think that's something we must welcome. No, no, the last no, no. thing when you're talking about investor confidence, I don't need to say anything about it. The great Rahul Bajaj has said exactly what is the reason for investor confidence going down or what is the reason for confidence no, in industry to go down. That's a totally different kind of issue that we're looking issues. at. Now, let me get Zafar Islam in Just and to looking respond into, to Sir. That's a completely okay. different issue. That I, I, I don't know if I can speak and all of that is a different issue. This is an issue. I have put my money. Tomorrow you come and change the rules because you came into power. Zafar Islam, you want to come in on this? <clears throat> Mr. Dalwa is saying that we are merely reviewing in good faith. Tamanna, I'm, I'm sorry, the audio is really bad and I'm not able to hear you or uh, or the other uh, panelists. But let me respond to you I, and uh, whatever I have understood uh, yeah. or I heard from uh, uh, on the channel so far. But the the, big, the biggest problem what we are, with the people of Maharashtra would be facing, the reversal, uh, reversal of all the initiative of the uh, uh, government who always looking for development, as its most uh, topmost priority and welfare of people as its topmost priority. Unfortunately, the this government is uh, uh, led by Mr. Adar Thakro and Adar Thakreji and the two other political parties. Their their credential is known to everyone. Every people in Maharashtra is, knows that the, what they had done in last ten years prior to 2014. They are the one who actually uh, uh, plundered the the wealth of the state. They did all the deals which actually where they had cut all the corruption was like rampant corruption we had seen in the, between 2004 to 2014 and I am sure that uh, they are again back to uh, the state. Yeah, but you know that, that the, all the, the Mr. Islam, Uddhav Thakri was with you also. He knew about all these projects. No, no, but today no, it, it, what is more important that who leads the state and it was led by the Bharati Janata Party and they were feeling suffocated and it is very evident from the fact that who helped them. It is the NCP and the Congress because they all know that with uh, using uh, without Thakre and Shishwana they can do a lot of uh, 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 unfair transaction, unfair deals and, okay. and they will only mint money, they will compromise with the okay. welfare of the people of Maharashtra, they will compromise the, with the Are interest you? of the Mahara, uh, uh, people of Maharashtra and the state of Maharashtra. So, we are a very unfortunate that uh, despite getting the mandate from the people to okay, no, see that, that, a, a that progressive is now an old government story. who is actually working I, I, day and night I, I to serve the people and for the welfare. Really, but that is now unfortunately an old no, story. So so to talk about what this government will do. You want to comment quickly Mr. Dalvai before no, I move on? Yes. So I'm happy as well as sad to see my friend Zafar, uh, Zafar Saab. No, I, all I'm saying that this, this government is actually same, determined to okay, reverse the entire initiative which has been undertaken by our government. He's saying yeah. he's not so going to reverse. I, he's yeah. saying he's not going to reverse. So I'm surprised. Yes, yeah, so it's very clear. Nobody has said anything is being reversed. But I am not surprised that my friend Mr. Zafar Islam is ramping up the same rhetoric, all the false claims, all the false claims. Oh, Mr. Anand Thigde, what kind of claims he made about your own party, he is a person in your party, your ex-chief minister immediately refuted all these Stick claims. To the point, so, I think sorry. let's not get into rhetoric about corruption and all these things. If they were corrupt, what were you doing for the last five years? Why didn't you exp it's look that up? So the point is, you are, you the are the one who is actually speaking about it. About six you are the one who said, we need to find out how we are going to no, no, but okay, Can I tell you something projects? about the deficit? And I you know, Shiram and Shishir will bear me out. The state of Maharashtra, like many state governments, has run on deficit for a long, long time. It is not like this mega hole has emerged. Correct. In the so last now, should we years. fund a bullet train in that case? Why was it taken up? If that's not a project that can okay. be afforded, okay. why should we do that? Okay. Before I come to you, Shiram and Shishir, I just want to run this uh, this very small piece, uh, uh, you know, by my colleague Utkarsh Chaturvedi, who has actually talked about the major projects that could get impacted. Because after all, it's important to know what exactly we're talking about. These are the ones in Mumbai, at least. Mega infrastructure projects kicked off by the former Maharashtra CM may come under the hammer as the new Chief Minister, Uddhav Thakre, gets ready to review them. Now, let's focus on the few key ones that may impact the Mumbai city, starting off with the Mumbai Nagpur Samriddhi Corridor. Now, this is a 700 kilometer highway proposed by the Fadnavis government connecting the financial capital and the XCM's home constituency. The cost of the project is 46,000 crores and have a lot of players involved in the construction, but the biggest are Larson & Tubro, Lions Engineering and PNC Infra. 
The controversial one of course is the South Mumbai Western Suburb Connector, commonly known as the Coastal Road. Now this is a 12,000 crore project in which the majority of the stretch is being constructed by LNT and Hyundai Development Company. Now environmentalists have been protesting that the Coastal Road will do major damage and it's not what the city really needs. A majority of this stretch will be developed by LNT and Hyundai Development Company as I said. Now finally the Varsova Bandra ceiling, it's also a part of the coastal road, is another key one. It's a 700 crore rupees project on the sea just like the Bandra Worli ceiling to reduce traffic in the peak hour. This contract was awarded to Reliance Infra but the worst hit if all of these projects are stalled would be LNT which is also building a part of the Thane Creek Bridge which is currently stands as one of the oldest bridge in the country and is now being re-engineered as an 800 crore rupees project by LNT and Sitco. Finally, the bullet train, the Ahmedabad Mumbai bullet train which is over 1 lakh 8 crore rupees of cost, that is also under scanner but in this case the tenders are not yet being floated and Uddhav Thakre has said that they will review the cost of the same as well. So, so this gives you an idea on the, of the slew of projects, there could of course be more again, again. We do not know if these are going to be scrapped. Now what has happened in Andhra Pradesh is a whole other nightmare and I want to talk about that and put that perspective in as well. Um, you know, uh, Shri, uh, you wanted to come in. The point I was making is about fiscal deficit. Most state governments are running with a heavy healthy fiscal deficit. India runs on a fiscal deficit and you have to figure out where you want to put in your money. Could there be an argument, Shriram, that a government has a right to choose its priorities? If this government wants to prioritize farmer interests and says that right now in the middle of a slowdown, whatever little money we have needs to go in a welfare kind of thing and not in big infrastructure projects, then um, that is the vision that they're following. Well, you know, it's not an either or issue, isn't it? It's not about, you know, I will spend money on welfare and I will not construct bridges and metro rail and expressways that will really boost productivity and boost employment and boost growth. It's not like that. You got to do, you got to do many of these things together. You ought to focus on welfare. Yes, you ought to focus on welfare. Nobody is saying no. But at the end of the day, a lot of these projects have already been cleared. They've been funded. Land has been acquired contracts have been given, except the bullet train for that matter. A lot of these projects have already happened. You talked about the Samrudhi corridor, 46,000 to 50,000 crore. 28,000 crore money has already been sanctioned by banks. Many of them are public sector banks who have already sanctioned the money. Land has been acquired, work has started, contract has been given. Now you want to go through the whole process of reviewing it, please review it. But if you want to go to cancel it or delay it, you're going to get into a whole lot of legal mess where people are going to go to court and investors are going to suffer and a lot of bankers are going to be upset and everybody is going to be upset. You also mentioned, I think the reporter also mentioned about the uh, coastal road in Mumbai. Now that is a BMC project. That is not an MMRDA project. That is a BMC project. So are we saying that the SENA-led government in the state is going to scrap a project which has been proposed by its own city corporation? I'm not so sure about that. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there is a bit of environmental approval that they need to get, which the court had struck it down. So they need to go through the whole process of getting another environmental clearance, which they are probably doing now. So the issue is not about whether I want to fund only welfare and not do infrastructure. A lot of this infrastructure is required in Bombay. It's not that it's not required in Bombay. You do need coastal road. You need to unclog the roads. You need to have more metros. You need a sea link. You need a new airport. You probably need and, and the Samrudhi corridor, which is from Nagpur to Mumbai, well, it'll open up a lot of things for it'll open up the hinterland for development. That was that, Imagine that, was cutting that a bit short of a the political time required decision. to travel from Mumbai to Nagpur. Yeah, was that a bit of a political decision? The bullet decision? train again. Okay. Maharashtra's, Maharashtra's contribution to the bullet train is 5,000 crore, and that's largely land. Yeah. Japan okay. is funding okay. 85 to 90 percent of the project, which is 1 lakh crore. The central government is giving 10,000 crore. Gujarat is giving 5,000 crore. Maharashtra is giving only 5,000 crore. It's not as if Maharashtra is taking up 50, 60 percent of the project cost. It's not like that. Secondly, I think there was a talk about, you know, fiscal deficit and debt. You need to see these. Maharashtra's fiscal deficit at the end of, you know, March or June 19 yes. was about 2.0, 2.1 percent. The FRBM limit is 3 percent. It's way below that of many other states. And it's a rich state. It's an industrialized state. It's a state that's growing. It's probably not as growing as much as some of the other big states are. But it's growing. It's not growing as much as Gujarat, but it's growing at 7-8%. 
you we talked about okay. debt now what is the debt in relation to gdp in relation to the state gdp that is the way you need to look at it it's not about the overall debt it's not about 5 lakh crore what is the 5 lakh crore in relation to the state gdp and is it manageable is it is it no, no. under control okay so the, those and are calls those are calls now at. the I mean, new political leaders about will have to take and file okay, crore as if it is something that is new political yeah shishir wants to come in those are calls the new political leaders will have to take my point is what is the intention behind it what is the intention behind it shishir you have been maintaining that the intention is basically to raise the stakes it's a negotiation tactic absolutely you know these are the these are the speculative uneasiness that that the shiv sena government is encashing on right now you know what sri ram rightly pointed out all these projects most of these projects are ring fenced financially so nobody can really tamper with it please do also remember that the shiv sena is in power in mumbai um, at the bmc level and there are two years later the municipal elections and they are desperately hoping that they would like to continue in the municipal elections they would not want to do anything which is going to hamper what people of mumbai feel also and mumbai really controls in some way uh, in, to a large extent the finances um, and at a country level so these are all what does uddhav thakre say what will he do and what can he do are three different things uh, so to review it yes will delay it a bit which is also to stop it is going to cause a lot of legal mess which he does not want to afford the real concern right now is the state fiscal deficit right now and that is also being caused by the larger welfare sops that are being promised as a part of this uh, yeah. minimum program that the three parties have come together and that is going to cost the state exchequer hugely uddhav thakre will ensure that using the bullet train as a bait possibly ensure that the modi government provides some kind of financial support to maharashtra to ensure that the fiscal dent that is yeah. getting caused but, gets uh, reduced no, no, but i mean i, I don't know about that, that i don't know about that shishir really because you know the, 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 the central government through the whole remember all the farm loan waivers last 3 years starting from uttar pradesh even when maharashtra did it under devendra fadnavis the central government always maintained the do it at your dime we aren't going to pay any money for this so i mean i don't know at especially at this point when gst revenues is a problem between state and well, center i don't know how they're going yeah. to really come in with any money is this a negotiation tactic uh, uh, mr dalwai and those who are uncharitable about politicians on the whole will say and please don't take this personally what do people right now think who don't understand how this works or who think that this is how it works new government comes in there is already a process in place they want to make sure that the wheels are regreased i'm sorry i'm saying this openly but this is what people are thinking are we going to have a whole new cycle of wheels being regreased before work is going to be allowed to continue and that honestly is the fear i'm glad you spelled it out so clearly because yeah. let me answer this i think we are jumping the gun no work has been stopped nothing is It's being threat, considered not at all not at all just hear me out the new government has taken place at a time when the state is in a big fiscal deficit now we need to know what is it in the treasury that we have what are the payments that have to be made how do we make the payments there is a slew of wonderful infrastructure projects like my friends have just mentioned which need to be completed we need to know which is the best way to complete them if there is a way to cut cost and do it in fact that's the way we will be looking at it there is absolutely no question of anything else if at all a small part of the metro that is a car shed that's the only thing that has been stopped and will be relocated nothing else I would just like to assure everybody, please okay. don't panic. Are you assured? Everything is going to be managed. Are you assured, Mr. Zafar Islam, Dr. Dalwai, there, with a full insure assurance that nothing will be stopped? See? Don't worry, we are merely reviewing. Are you assured? At least wait for uh, you know the next move before uh, raising the red flag. Not at all. Not at all, Tamanna. Not at all, Tamanna. In fact, they are. by making this kind of state statement by giving this kind of a direction to the authorities by uh, 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 making a public a statement that they will review they will install they will do this they will do that the, you actually uh, 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 it it badly impacts the sentiments and the investors who was considering investment in maharashtra will think twice because they also know that uh, these parties are extortionist they have they have uh, always take a lots of money for doing any uh, quality project uh, in in the state of maharashtra or elsewhere because everyone knows that how they have run the uh, government in between 2010 2014 so 
This extortion party request are looking for an opportunity, okay. but in the I, process, who I, is suffering is that they are compromising with the interests of the state okay. and the people I, of Maharashtra. I, I, I would like to again and remind Mr. Islam. Okay, let, him respond. At, let him respond. Uh, 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 Zafar Islam, let him respond. Accepting Zafar Islam, let him respond. They are good at uh, installing the project and this is what they will do. Let me remind my friend, I don't know whether he's from Maharashtra, pardon my ignorance, but you have no idea what has happened to the state of Maharashtra in the last five years. Agriculture has shrunk to 0.4%. Unemployment has risen, industries have shut down, the entire collection on GST has gone down in the last five years, not only in Maharashtra, across the country, investment sentiment is down because of an atmosphere of fear, my friend. We are just begun one week to try to see how we can try and restructure all this. No, just be I, patient. I, 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 I think now enough see. accusations have in, been made. In fact, Let's get in down fact, to work. Let's stop the politics. Everyone was comfortable. Let's stop the rhetoric. Anand Tegde made a preposterous statement which Devendra Fadnavis himself has his credentials, Let's get down to serving the people. Something is unmatched. Elections are over. Okay, one by one, one by one, guys. Please, one by one. Elections are over. One by one, and you know it well. Islam is very much from Mumbai, so but from Mumbai, he's a political leader of the state. Maharashtra as well, but elections are over. Zafar Bhai, elections are over. Let's do some work for the people now. Let's not talk about elections because then we go back to you know what the people of Maharashtra have borne, what they voted, what absolutely they need a government now. Okay, Zafar Islam, your response to that? He's saying, give me some time, give us some time. It's just been one review meet. Wait and watch what we do. No, now, no. if they do something like what has happened in Andhra Pradesh, See, then definitely, we, we, are, in, then definitely we are not in hurry. I, we know asked. that. No, Tamanna, we are, we are not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. Let them run the government. We have been mandated by the people of uh, Maharashtra. Even Mr. Sharad Pawar, their supremo, even today he said that the mandate was with BJP, not with us. We had not to sit in the ma people he at mandate. He said it was with your alliance, the not the BJP. It okay. is because of uh, uh, Sena and the trick this. Mr. Pawar well, played well, well, that we have been able to Let's form the government. But away from which that... Actually, which actually leads to a solution. Because this is, like I said in the beginning of the show, it's not about Maharashtra. Shriram, we've seen the same thing happen in Andhra Pradesh. And actually there, uh, it is uh, a more horrific situation. The World Bank, the AIIB had to pull out of the Amravati project. Uh, you know, and uh, that was a huge project. Now, you these global agencies come in with 10, 20, 30 year timelines and then a new government comes in and wants to change everything, whatever be the justification, right or wrong. How can you protect people from this? Do you need some kind of a law which ring fences certain investments of a certain value? I think you need a law and I think from whatever I've been hearing the central government is probably preparing a preparing a law that will protect these kind of investments from any kind of political change and political turbulence. So you need a law which will basically say that if a project has probably crossed a certain milestone in terms of achieving certain certain operational parameters or funding or whatever then you can't cancel them or you can't scrap them. Uh, I think something like that is probably in the works and you need it. The second point that I want to make is that you know, we've, you, you've said this at the beginning, that you've seen this movie before. Uh, I don't know how many people remember this, but way back in the mid-90s when the first Sena BJP government took charge, there was this project by Enron, the Dabol power plant. Yes. Uh, one of the first things that the Sena government, the Sena chief minister did at that time, yeah. Sri Manohar Joshi, was that he scrapped the project. And then the project was renegotiated with the, with the promise that it would actually lower cost, which it didn't lower cost. And the whole Enron issue became such a controversial and such a political hot potato that the plant had to shut down. Yeah. The Maharashtra government had to pull out of the whole thing. And then the company collapsed. But that's a different story. So, you know, many of these things like reviewing, changing projects that are there, you know, they, especially when it's done with a fair bit of political political bias and political uh, input in it, it, it really doesn't work. It, it just contributes to grief and pain and suffering everywhere. It really doesn't work. So I think... I think there are better ways in which one can raise or increase their political capital. I think there are better ways for the Sena and the B well, uh, the, NCP the and the Congress to actually go out and show that, okay, we are better leaders than the yeah. BJP in the Maharashtra. But this is rise. not the way. Uh, let, let me, let, let, let me uh, lay, lay down opportunity number one. We're speaking now in the beginning of December. In the next five to six months, monsoons will hit again in the city of Mumbai. Why doesn't the new government take it upon itself that there will be no flooding and no problems in Mumbai this time round. Do that. Focus on that. 
and then I think that will be the biggest political brownie point anyone can hope for. Well, hoping for the best uh, coming forward for all the people of Maharashtra. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on debate number one. I want to thank my panelists. We're taking a very short break, but power-packed stuff up ahead. We're going to do a deep dive into the entire Carvey mess. What really happened? What does it mean? What does it mean for lenders? What does it mean for investors? And then we're going to get you real voices on the Hyderabad horror. Um, we've spoken to uh, my colleagues in the ET Now newsroom, working women who explain what they feel when they hear about something like this. Don't miss that conversation. We'll be right back.